Good morning uh, or good afternoon once again, uh, depending on wherever you are reaching us from. Uh, again, my name is Enoch. Uh, I work with SNV and I will be uh, the facilitator for this uh, webinar. This webinar um, is organized by SNV under the Boosting Green Employment and Enterprise Opportunities in Ghana, a joint action funded by the European Union, as well as the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Ghana. It has been implemented by UNCDF, that is United Nations uh, Capital Development Fund and SNV Ghana. It's implemented in two regions in Ghana, Ashanti region and Western region. And the overall objective or aim is to create greater economic and employment opportunities for youth, women, returning migrants, uh, uh, you know, by promoting and supporting sustainable and green businesses in these two regions that I have earlier on mentioned. The project has four main result areas. The result one mainly looks at, you know, stimulating and creating short-term jobs to, to create, you know, employment opportunities for people. So it's just, um, as you can see on your shots, the result two, is looking at improving the employability and entrepreneurship capacity of young people, women, and returning migrants as well um, to take advantage of the green and climate resilient local economies that uh, would have been created by result one. Uh, result three looks at increasing access and usage of financial services. And then the result four, which is the last result, area is looking at incubating and accelerating uh, SMEs so that they will be able to uh, offer decent and sustainable jobs for young um, women and returning migrants as well. As you are aware, uh, plastic waste and electronic waste have actually been with us for some time now and is also because the Relatively living uh, standards of people in both urban and rural areas have improved. And so the consumption of um, plastic and electronic products also have equally increased. We are, we have, we are witnessed to the, the hard work that it keeps causing to us in our gutters, in our, at our beaches, and so on and so forth. We have been told that by the year 2030, if nothing is done to curb plastic waste, we would actually have more plastics in the ocean or the sea than we have fish in the sea. So it's really something that we need to really take up seriously as a country. So in line with this, uh, the green project, which is the Boosting Green Employment and Enterprise Opportunities in Ghana, um, commissioned a study. And the study was to conduct you know, a market analysis of the Ghanaian's e-waste and plastic sector, where we sought to assess the opportunities and challenges of SMEs to support in managing the increasing waste that are coming up in the country. So we recruited Don uh, Mondan Limited, a Ghanaian consulting company, to actually lead on, on that for us uh, last year. So the purpose of this webinar is to validate the findings of the study and then also contribute to the literature that we have obtained. So on that note, I would love to invite Dr. Richard Amfo Otu and, and, and his team to lead on uh, this webinar presentation for us. Doc. Thank you very much, yours, Enoch. Thank you very much, Enoch, for the introduction. Um, it's been a wonderful introduction to give insight to the project. Um, we are from Mondan Limited. Um, I'm Richard Amfu to the lead. I have Dr. Corinna Kolekote as our gender experts on the team. And I have Mr. Daniel um, Krofi Foster, also a member of the team on the environmental sustainability. So we constituted a team for the assignment. The objective for our market analysis um, include trying to 
determine the size and the opportunities in the e-waste and plastic sector of the selected pilot districts in the two regions and then look at the challenges they face so that we can um, address them as the green project takes on the implementation activities. We were also looking at the informality of the sector and how it can impact on job creation and enterprise growth. And so we considered that. We looked at opportunities for SMEs to enter into the sector, new SMEs that can enter in and then grow in the sector. We also looked at opportunities that are available for youth and women as well as returnees to be engaged in these sectors um, for green employment. And then we looked at some business models that exist that could be considered and replicated in pilot district. So um, without wasting time, we know that plastic is growing globally. And in Ghana, it's, it's been estimated that we generate about 22,500 tons of waste. And out of this, it has been projected that 70% is plastic waste, which amount to about 3,825 tons of plastic a day. And cumulatively, you are looking at about 1.4 million tons of plastics annually. And this presents a huge challenge for the country, but as well as opportunity for creating so sustainable jobs for youth and for the vulnerable groups in society. And so Ghana has come up with a plastic policy which tries to address and take advantage of the huge volumes of plastic that is being produced and try and create a green jobs that um, 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 compasses circularity in, in, in enterprise uh, existence. And so that is what the policy is looking at. It is also gender neutral because uh, it has not addressed the gender issues very well, but we know that waste management and uh, specific, specifically plastic issues relate to gender because uh, women play a major role in that regard. And therefore, it requires that we make significant effort to include gender issues. And Green has shown the way. We also know that Ghana imports a number of electronic products, electronic and electrical products. And it has been estimated that annually we are importing about 40,000 tons of these materials into the country, which we don't have the needed capacity to actually manage. And therefore it comes and at the end of its life cycle, it's ended, it's ended up in the hands of informal sector workers who adopt various methods to break it down and recover material from it. And this is evident at um, Abu Bushi. And then also in Ashanti region, you can find it within a uh, some magazine area. However, we have some SMEs that have adopted best practices to try and dismantle and um, recover materials from e-waste. Other international organizations have led the way to support Ghana to streamline this sector. And that is what gave birth to the, uh, the production of the Hazardous and Electronic Waste Management Act of 2016 at 917. GIZ has taken a lot of initiatives to lead Ghana in this area to improve e waste management um, in the country. Now, for this assignment, we visited the districts that have been selected for the pilot, eight of them, and then we did um, online communication with one of the districts. And so we interacted with about 26 SMEs that are operating within these districts. And we realized that most of them were male-dominated dom uh, SMEs that recover plastics and um, e-waste and other um, scrap materials that they find within their jurisdiction and then outside their jurisdiction based on their operational um, strategies. So um, for, for, for the size of plastics and e-waste in the selected districts, we projected that using the population growth and using the waste generation as given by Mesa and Co. And we projected that based on the 17% of waste constituting plastic, um, we will end up having about 88.2 tons of waste, plastic waste being generated um, by these 10 districts on a daily basis which presents opportunity to recover 
that we don't create problems for the environment. In terms of e waste, data was scarce, and therefore we used um, projections from World Bank's report on what the waste 2018, which says that globally we have about 0.02% of e waste production. And for Ghana being a middle income country, we assume a value of 0.01 to estimate that. And that gives us about 5.8. This is to talk about the size. And it has been found that the plastic that we produce in Ghana has some percentage based on how many um, So in, in effect, it has been found that the such water as plastics constitute the bulk of the plastics in, in, the, in, in, in our country. And from our projection, based on the 88.2 tons, we can see that out of that, we have about 30.53 tons that constitute plastics in the uh, such plastics in the districts that we are talking about, which presents opportunity to create um, jobs for people, or for youth, and for women. Now, we identified a number of opportunities, um, which includes the opportunity to improve on the collection of our e waste within these areas, because a number of electronic gadgets that have come up. So, uh, different sizes and different uh, products that are used for different purposes, but we need to identify them so that when they reach their end of life, we can collect them. And it calls for a um, system that will improve the collection, as well as creating awareness among the society so that they will know what these e-waste are and where they can send them to when they reach their end of life. And then we can also create a refurbishing center and repair centers where youth can be engaged and they will be trained as to how to um, bring these products back to um, function. And so that can be done. And then we can also look at opportunity of creating this dismantling center where they can dismantle them using appropriate tools so that we can have spare parts from there. And then also um, the district that have been selected you can have large acreage of land, which presents opportunity that when we engage the authorities, we can create these centers, they can give us land, which can support the project. Now, there are challenges, and we look at it as, yes, e-waste may be limited, looking at the nature of these districts in terms of um, the quantum we may get from this area. But um, if we, we, we look at it and address it, we can and harness it from other adjacent districts. Then the perception that this sector is female dom uh, male dominated, because you see males um, applying most of these businesses, women can also be in there. Then in terms of plastics, again, we can improve the collection through buyback center. We realize that on the field, most of the plastics that were collected were ADP, the hard ones, and then the PP. But we have the pet bottle, we have the sachet water, we have the LDP, they are all there that they can collect them. This presents opportunity for engaging the youth to improve the collection rate and recover as much as possible from these districts um, that we piloted the project. We can also implement separation project uh, program with institution or some selected households within this area to recover the plastics to boost uh, recycling interventions. Then um, we know that there, there's currently some market that exists in Ghana where we buy people buy the pet bottles and export to Europe and America, and the project can tap into that pet bottles that are all in these districts can be collected, and we can link them up to these companies to do that. And, um, other fashionable accessories and all that. We can also go into pro producing construction materials from plastics, as being done by EcoCent and NERP in Ghana, they have shown the way we can learn from that. Then the challenge is that plastics have low weight. And so the cost of it is um, when, you, when somebody collects, the motivation in there is minimal because the value, you need to collect a lot before you get small value. And then the cost of transporting by the SMEs from their various districts to either for Marseille or Accra for sale is, is, a, is a, a challenge which takes away the benefit that they should gain. And then also access to financial products among these um, actors, um, we saw it as a, one of the issues. They were not assessing financial products for the financial sector. Um, so we need to look at that. Then in terms of um, SMEs going into the uh, sector, we look at the value chain in terms of collection. Yes, there's opportunity in terms of collection for plastic, but in new ways it's limited. For aggregation, we can create buyback center to 
aggregate more of the plastics. Yes, we can also do for e-waste, but the volume may, may not be significant. So maybe they may we may have to combine the two se se sector so that when we have buyback center, you can take uh, e-waste as well as plastics. Transportation, in fact, there's a lot of opportunity in there because they are using the existing transport system. And so people who ply those roads, they, they engage them to transport the goods, we give them a limited um, um, value. So if you want to tap the opportunity, there is limited. Major, major opportunity also exists when we want to add value to the plastic that they get through pre-processing um, activities, like creating, shredding it and creating flakes for, for the industry that can create more opportunity in the plastics sector. But for the e-waste, dismantling will be the appropriate way so that we can get spare parts from there. For recycling, um, opportunity exists to also set up plants in, in areas where it is located along major road and is bordered to a number of districts so that we can uh, accumulate most of these plastics for, to feed the, the recycling unit. Um, in terms of e-waste, the fabrication, center could be one of the opportunity or the dismantling center be a possible way to go. And for the remanufacturing, this may be um, looked at in the greater Kumase and then secondly, Takrade, where it can take from various districts in the region. For challenges the SMEs face, we found out that most of them like the machinery that will help them to crunch the materials to reduce the volume, but increase their returns on it. And therefore, um, the project can look at that. Then also, we saw that most of the SMEs that are operating are foreigners, and um, they, they don't own the lands that they are using now. They are renting them, and so we, we, that needs to be looked at. And then acquisition of um, acquisition of, of buying stolen items was also reported. Most of the scavengers, or sorry, the people who go in to recover these materials um, are accused sometimes by the community members, and some of them are arrested and taken to the police station. And this creates opportunity for extortion among community members and the security agencies. We also encountered um, a challenge where they complain of extortion by police on during transportation. Access to financial products is a major issue, and support from government to the sector to recognize their role in the sector is limited. In terms of the informality of the of the sector, we realize that um, association is not predominant in in all the districts we visited. Um, though we realize at Akuma that there was some kind of one group that have put themselves together, but it's not really formalized. That could look that, and then we we can improve on it. Then also, um, the SMEs are mainly owned by families and people who are linked to one country or one ethnic groups, then they, they, they build up that business. And so you don't have people contributing financial capital to Im improve or to increase their asset base. And then also um, in terms of job, uh, the benefits are not well structured. But you are paid based on the role you, you perform on a daily basis or on agreed terms. Then asset holding is limited as well as in terms of working hours, it is not properly structured just as the characteristics of informal sectors. Um, but Dr. Korte will continue with the gender briefing. Dr. Korte, okay. So then I'll, I'll continue. In terms of gender, we, we realize that the sector is dominated by male, as we've said, but there are young boys and girls who were also involved in recovering some materials to be able to gather some kind of uh, financial benefit to meet their own needs, and that needs to be looked at. But we think that in the, in, in the sector, apprenticeship dominates. People learn the trade by apprenticeship, and that needs to be looked at. There's also some kind of social support. Women play different roles, but looking at what was going on, we realized that women's role were limited to washing, bagging, and cutting of plastics in bigger SMEs. And therefore, um, that presents an opportunity that can be looked at. So there are other areas that women can participate. Currently, looking at the sector there, women can play this role, and as well as buying the product from those who bring them to the SMEs, as well as um, um, from the communities. And they can manage the um, buyback center we, we've talked about, and so there's more opportunity for these youth um, to be engaged in this sector to uh, collect more plastics 
for the industry. We can also see the youth engaged in um, building operations at the SMEs um, where they have building machines. They can compact these products. We can also engage them in the dismantling as we talked about. They can also be part of the um, using the plastic for creating craft uh, products and, and the production of solar energy system from e-waste product. We can also engage them in the refurbishing aspect of the e-waste. For women, they can involve in they can be involved in the sales, in the collection of the plastics from the communities. If we include the sachets and all that, they will be very much engaged in that area. And then when we create the buyback center, they will be involved. When we add on value addition to the existing SMEs or we create business that will produce flakes and pellets, then more women can be led on in the sector. Then they will, they will be more integrated. And then also it can help to facilitate the use of uh, plastics recycled products. Now for business models that we identify, we realize that from the operations of the sector, People collect from various points and they send it to the existing SMEs to sell them. Some of the SMEs buy and transport them to recycling companies straight away in Kumase or in Accra. And some also give it to off tickets, so they, they accumulate and sell it to others who may add value to it to produce flakes and then also go and sell to the recycling company at a, a higher economic value. And some also be they are optics, but they buy and then sell to the companies. For e-waste, it was more or less a linear uh, process. But um, uh, EcoSent has added uh, another level where we collect and they buy, and you can do the value addition by creating the solar panel system. And that's what we are looking at the refurbishment center so that we can make it more circular in nature. Um, for business models that we can learn from, um, we can learn from EcoCent. Sorry. We can learn from EcoCent where pet bottles are converted to uh, construction materials to produce blocks and bricks. Um, we can enlarge that to include all kinds of plastics, as is being done by um, Nelplast to produce the pavement blocks and construction product. And we can also learn from the innovation center where e-waste products are used to produce solar energy um, batteries to produce power. Then in terms of um, expanding existing, we saw Hafizia Enterprise in Abuabu at, uh, at Kumase where a lot of people have been engaged because they have a number of activities, crushing of the plastics, washing of the plastics, uh, crushing and then uh, bagging and all that. So a lot of women were engaged in that. And they buy from all over the, the Ashanti region and even Bono, as well as the northern part of Ghana. So this presents opportunity for training new entrants into the sector and um, training, using it as an internship center or apprenticeship um, section. Then also we saw similar um, center at Ejura Gomba line, where um, a crashing center has been established to uh, create employment. About six um, females have been employed in that area. And we can leverage on creation of association so that more materials can be supplied to this center to crash them before sending to the um, Accra or Kumase. In conclusion, we, we say that men and women are actively involved in the sector, but their roles are limited based on the energy input required and uh, the risk associated uh, differ for these um, actors, women and, and, and men. For the sector, we saw that at the district level, we have a lot of foreigners who are engaged in the aggregation as the SME managers operated. And at the re regional level, like Marse, Takrade, we saw Ghanaians predominating. And so they buy from these areas. And we see that there's opportunity for pet and LDP and such as water bags to be collected since it is not currently um, collected by the existing SMEs. We also see opportunity for existing SMEs to expand as well as um, through creation of buyback center and adding on pre-processing facilities, more job opportunities can be created. 
children involvement, it, we saw it in there and it, it, it may continue, but this needs to be checked so that it doesn't create problem of um, child labor for the project. In terms of recommendation, we recommended that green projects should support the district assemblies to come up with some system and then the SMEs to be able to generate sufficient data that we can use for future planning because the, the, the data doesn't exist at the district level. And then also creation of an e-waste publishing center, dismantling center to properly dismantle e-waste to avoid burning of materials and polluting the environment, um, we, we recommend that. And then improving collection of e-waste by engaging users of e-waste products so that they know where they can return these products when they reach the end of life. And then creating awareness among the citizens about the value of waste in general, and then focusing on the e-waste and plastics. Transforming also the SMEs to make them more formal by providing training and, and all that that will require for them to become more or less formal in their operation. We also have to engage the SMEs and then the MMDAs as well as the security agencies to create win-win situation for them. And we need to support the existing ones to expand so that more jobs can be created. We can also su support them with training in the use of plastics for construction. Gender um, equality issues also exist, and we think that more women will be employed when value addition is um, added to the existing system, as well as when we create the buyback centers, uh, more women can be employed in the sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, very insightful uh, information. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Richard. Um, I'm for O2 and your team. Again, today's webinar is on a market analysis that we have conducted on e-waste and plastic uh, waste, where we assess the opportunities and challenges for SMEs. The floor is open, and I want us to be thinking around uh, what opportunities actually exist also for women and young people they're vulnerable in, in plastic and e-waste uh, management in Ghana. The, the legislative and legal institution, uh, uh, arrangement and frameworks in, in Ghana, your experiences would, would be good to, to hear, and then also questions and additions that you want to also bring on board. Uh, thanks for those who are putting um, uh, clarifications and suggestions also into the chat box. There's one from Joss, uh, he says that uh, international buyers actually would prefer the bullet pet rather than the shredded pet. Thanks for that uh, information. So there's a question that we are not doing so much with e-waste and plastic. So I would want to open the floor for, for, for you know, additions, questions or clarifications, and then also suggestions for us to also improve on 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 the the study that we have done so the floor is open kindly raise your hand use the icon there and then i would uh, invite you to make a submission or better still you can use the chat box and make a suggestion or ask a question Forty thousand tons of e-waste or electronic product imported into ghana every year quite interesting uh, um, Yvonne, can we hear from Yvonne, please? Okay, Morning. thank you very much. I'm Yvonne with the Richie okay. Street. Okay. I, want to, Go ahead. I want to find out what are some of the opportunities available for those uh, the waste companies that's, that are already into the system. You know, the waste companies are already into household waste collections and we come out along with disposed TVs and other electrical waste. So what are some of the opportunities available for us? Thank you very much. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, can we hear from Paul, Paul Tete? Fisheries Commission. Can we hear from Paul Tete? Uh, please, can you hear me? Yeah, if you can speak a bit louder, that would be fine. Uh, OK. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Paul. OK. Uh -huh. I'm saying this is Paul. I'm from Fisheries Commission. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, um, I'm from a fishing community in Choco, um, and I'm planning to organize a beach cleanup. One of the reasons why I'm planning no, a beach cleanup is to um, 
is to um, create awareness on how plastic waste uh, affects the marine environment. Um, I, 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 I was talking to um, some of the chief, chief fishermen around that area, and we are trying to organize, fix a beach, and organize the beach cleanup. We clean the beach, and I'll get the opportunity to educate them on uh, plastic waste effects on marine environment. And now my question is, um, uh, I'm looking at um, maybe a support from any organization or the organization, maybe after we have collected the, the trash and we have separated them um, like accordingly, uh, if plastic waste, uh, bottle waste is bottle waste, if it is uh, ghost net, is ghost net and the rest. And I'm trying to uh, uh, um, get people on board so that when you collect the trash, then you can give it out to maybe the buyers and whatever. I don't know where, where are you get to you. Yes, yes, Paul. Very clear. Uh, All right. Uh, Thank you. Is there any company or some organization that can come on board when we said that? Yeah, I think that there are a lot of the there are a lot of companies. Yes. Okay. So so well noted. We would address your your concern or your question. Okay. Can, can we hear from uh, Timotheus? Yes, Senok. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you too? Good, good to hear I'm from you. I'm fine, I'm fine. I, I, I think you remember me from our... Yes, uh, I do. Yes, 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 I do. Yes. Good, um, go ahead. I, I'm good with my questions that I posted uh, on the chat. Now, I, I know a few of the, the background, but my question now is, you know, we, we, we have this um, solid waste collection um, uh, system in Ethiopia as well. I just wanted also to to listen from your side. That's why I actually wanted to to participate from the very very place. We had we had a major issue of um, of the government long hand on it. Like they decide on everything, including the. Um, Price setting and also the way of transporting and also organizing the SMEs. Uh, possibly you all will be collecting and aggregating the things. But in, in Ghanaian case, when, when I see the presentation from the uh, like talented uh, Mundan, they were saying police are really against uh, the transportation and the somehow like. Uh, blocking the, the system rather than even uh, uh, supporting and, uh, and organizing them and, and uh, providing more of uh, enabling environments. How do you see that the enabling environment, like policy and the rules and regulations are really uh, for or against it in, 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 in uh, creating opportunities for you and women there? Excellent, excellent. That's a good question. I We would address that. Uh, uh, in a jiffy, that's a very good question, Timotheus. Uh, can we, uh, Doug, do you want to give a quick um, reaction? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, to Enoch, and the uh, questions that came up. Yes, thank you very much for the questions so far. So Yvonne wanted to know what role the um, waste companies that formerly exist can play. Uh, in fact, if, for our visit, we realized that all these, these trade that have been selected for the past is only the Lion Ghana company that operates in this area. And we don't have robust house to house waste collection system currently. And so they pick everything together from communal point and few of the um, houses that have registered benefit from house to house collection. And so if this project will pilot separation system with institution, then it will be better to partner with existing waste management companies to be able to leverage on the strength and the resources they have and work together as a team to improve the sector. And so if Waste 360 is um, interested in there, then they would have to look at how they can partner so that when there's segregation, you can pick the plastics or the, the, the valuable one you are interested in for, for your operation. And if we have components that need to be transported to dump site, that arrangement also be done through the engagement with the former waste companies. 
uh, for poor um, fisheries. Yes, um, you, you rightly said there are a number of companies uh, working around Choco. I think Jekora Venture is just close to, to the uh, former, um, uh, what do we call, Lavender Hill. They, they have a recycling um, plastic aggregation point there. You can engage um, Jekora Venture because it's close to Choco too, so that they can support you there. Um, in terms of the system, yes, in Ghana, the system exists, but for the recovered materials from the waste, it becomes a valuable asset that is transported. And so it is through the transportation that we see the security agencies interfering with the transportation system as they man the routes. And so the, there should be a policy framework that will support the activities of these informal sector workers who are actually recovering the plastics. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the Ministry of Sanitation and Ministry of um, Environment would have to look at that, how to support so that the circular economy system can be well and firmly integrated in our waste management system. Because if they collect the recyclable from the dump site, from the various waste streams, and they, they gather them, and during the transportation that are challenges, then the law, the policy framework has to look at it. That's why we're calling on the, um, the project to engage the SMEs and the security agencies there so that we can create a win-win situation. Because of course, there may be t free issues. People may steal other products from uh, somewhere. And so that's why the security agencies are there to check. So when, if there are systems to prove that it's a genuine material for recycling purposes, then there should be a win-win situation for the sector actors. Um, in terms of price control and all that, those systems are, exist for the former waste collection. But this, we are concerned about re re recyclable material that have been recovered from the waste management um, operations. Since we don't practice source segregation of our waste, that is how come uh, we have this situation. I don't know if um, Timotheus is helped. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe just to quickly add, uh, Timotheus, the, the reason for why uh, the uh, sometimes the security service really disturbs some of the, the SMEs is that there is a clear law around transportation of waste, you know. And okay. so uh, you, you, you are required to adhere to those, those, those regulations. And so, so in Ghana, for example, uh, we normally use the tricycles. I'm sure you have some in Ethiopia, where you are, you cannot transport waste for more than uh, five kilometers with that particular uh, vehicle or form of transportation. So you need the the the, the proper waste vehicles that you are co you cover it, and then you can then transport to either a transit station and then it goes to the main point of you know where you want to do the processing and all that so i am very sure that the security uh, personnel stop these 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 uh, micro businesses and ask questions we adhere to the policies and the laws that are enshrined in our you know sanitation management framework so so maybe that is where the issue is coming from. Otherwise, we have quite a good uh, policy enabling environment for uh, plastic and all kinds of waste management in, in, in Ghana. There is also a question on whether, uh, I don't know whether you, you are asking whether SMV fund waste companies. So maybe you can, you can actually uh, bring it up well. So we would be able to uh, address that question. Um, Yvonne, is your hand still up? Yvonne. Okay. So the floor is still open. The chat box is still open as well. Would love to read uh, your messages or your uh, contribution as well. Again, I, I see that we have um, practitioners on online, and we have SMEs also 
online. It would be good also to hear from you your own experience around uh, some of the things that we have talked about in terms of uh, uh, the policy environment, in terms of access to finance, also in terms of opportunities for for women to 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 join the the sector because we realize that it's male dominated as per what we have heard this morning so it'd be interesting to hear from you your experience around how we can also encourage more women to into the sub sector and and so and so forth uh herbert Please, the floor is yours. You can ask your question or addition. Hi, Herbert. Uh, yeah. And then go thank ahead. Opportunity. My, my name is Hubert Zan from the Ghana Energy Commission. Go ahead, Hubert. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can. Great, great. Yes, yeah, so just for okay, the purpose please go ahead of your information. Question. Yeah, just for the purpose of information and contribution, uh, speaking from the angle of policy, Energy Commission, what is happening is that uh, we actually have a regulation that bans the importation of used refrigerators and used air conditioners into the country. Um, the idea is that uh, as much as possible, you don't want um, uh, the country to be more of a dumping site where more waste is coming in when we have less capacity to you know recycle these these items and i'm speaking from the angle of electronic waste so uh, just to add to your wonderful platform and also to give that prior information that in addition to this the energy commission is engaging with stakeholders to come up with an omnibus regulation to cover more appliances. So we know that once a product is banned, the obsolete version, there should be a minimum standard for the new ones as well. Otherwise, the dumping comes in two forms, the used obsolete ones, and then the brand new ones, which are substandard. And in order to solve this, there's a regulation that has been currently uh, proposed to be passed to parliament for them to approve it for 17 more appliances, which will set a minimum performance of the brand new versions which are coming into the country. These include blenders, microwaves, washing machines, you know, and uh, just, just uh, a number of them. Now, once that regulation is passed, the omnibus one will, however, ban the importation of the used substandard version of these appliances. So I just thought I should chip it in for the purpose of information. And uh, also to know that uh, even though you want sustainability, well, but you don't see. want more items coming into the country and we have quite enough here to work with. Thank you. Excellent information, Herbert, so much. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Yes, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Okay. Hi, John, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you, Enoch. So uh, I am John with- So John and Ignatius, uh, after John, Ignatius can go ahead. All right. So John. Okay, so thank Okay, you know, can you hear me? Yes, please. We can hear you. Okay. So I'm John with your power space in the Western region. And um I've had the chance to join organizations like OICI on the same plastic waste, specifically wash related issues. And during my visits and tours, I realized that I realized and learned that most of the fisher folk from communities like Axim do bring plastic waste from their exploits at the sea, from their fishing trips. And when they get back on the beach, because there's no available and immediate place to dispose of these materials in a proper manner, it literally ends up back on the beach, which eventually ends up into the sea again. Is there any, um, is there any 
part, the research came across where these problems have been um, sought to or has been looked at where we can prevent the plastics going back into the sea after they've been brought out. Thank you. Thank you, John, for that. Uh, Ignatius. Hi, go ahead, Ignatius, go ahead. Okay, so then we would, we would just, uh, Doug, if you can just answer that, if, if you, you came across any of that uh, during the research. Okay, Th thank you very much. Um, in terms of uh, the beach, well, we did not, under this assignment, talk to the fisher folks, but under similar assignment, we spoke to fisher folks on plastics, not exactly at Axim, but at Amshama Hunter, um, at uh, Anoma, Abrua, one of them, and then um, at Jamestown. And so they often get some quantities, but not so much of plastics. Some quantities are sometimes recovered from their, uh, uh, their activities. But if we have a means to place storage containers close to these areas, then we will need to engage these uh, fisher folk that whenever they recover this and they keep it in their boats and get offshore, um, they can dump them into these containers. But some of them, when they also get it, they throw it back into the sea. So it calls for education um, of these um, worker folks in, in the uh, coastal communities. For Azim also, we saw that there were two aggregators who were there. Um, depend on, they, they are interested in different plastics. So if we create a buyback center and um, they cover a significant amount of plastic that the project is interested in, then it can serve as a point to also give it to a buyback center or sell it there for whatever amount they may get. So that is what I would say. Um, I wanted to say something also about the, the somebody put something on the eco levy and plastic tax on the platform. Yes, um, as I've seen that answer has been provided that the eco levy is for um, e waste. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I know they started it, but along the line there were challenge and they they put a stop to it. But I would need to find out if it has been um, reactivated for it to work. The plastic tax, currently there are issues um, where the plastic companies are saying they have contributed a lot and government has not used the money for the intended purpose. They are, are calling for accountability, but the Ministry of Environment is working on it with the Ministry of uh, Finance and local government to resolve the issue as far as uh, I know from last year. Yes. Um, Yes, Energy Commission, that, that is good. But I think we need to also look at um, the, the bobs. Because they form part of the electrical waste in the sector. How do we deal with the bobs, the, the damaged bobs and the spot bobs, and those with mercury and all that? I think that is an area that we may also look at as, um, as an institution um, going forward. So all the interventions you're putting in is, is great to stop what is coming. Do, you still have some people bringing uh, small quantities, unlike before, but we can still look at it and address the, the, the whole electronic and electrical um, uh, waste aspects. Because we we currently lo looking at the work ones, but the small, small ones are, um, are slipping by. So we can look at that also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ignatius, you can go ahead. After that, Richmond. All right. Also. Hello. Yeah, please. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, we can hear you. I wanted to ask whether you, your organization provide funding for waste companies. Yeah. And then if uh, you do provide fund, what are the processes one is supposed to go through in applying for that? Yeah. Thank you. But before, before you drop, how, how big is your company? Uh, we are now starting. I mean, okay, we are now starting. All right. yeah. Excellent. Uh, Richmond. Hello, good morning, uh, and thanks for having me. Um, and thanks for putting this together. My name is Richmond. I'm the 
Um, co-founder executive director of Plastic Punch. Um, we are an NGO raising awareness on the dangers of plastics mm. and coming up with sustainable waste management solutions. So we work a lot on the beaches as well as part of our awareness strategies. Um, to highlight or to catch on what Enoch and Doc said about the practice on the beach, we are a lot in contact with the fisher folks. And what happens is, or the reality on the ground right now, in some areas, they are getting more plastics than fishes. Um, when they cast their net. Um, so that is already horrible. The practice is most of them bury them or they bend them. We tried to um, give an artistic fish bin for which the EU supported one at the Jamestown um, to some of these communities. But the problem is, or uh, the final chain is the value of washed plastics is not as it is for um the, the the clean ones these ones will be considered dirty and they come in different forms there is a chain to end that of course it has to do with a lot of awareness what they find there is not from them it's from everyone finding its way there but just to say to manage that it, it really needs a strong collaboration with uh, with the district assembly who will regularly come and take off the trash otherwise these guys will not have any confidence in the system and go about burying it and burning it rather than them having it around them. So this, this um, problem with the fishermen and plastics, um, it's really affecting their stock and livelihoods. And I feel we should have a collective approach in, in, in dealing with that. Thank you. Thank you, Richmond. Uh, maybe the last one before we address the two questions, three questions, plus Benjamin's question as well, or uh, comment. Benjamin, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Benjamin. I'm a founder of Fashion Mira. So, um, one challenge that my adventure is also uh, finding because with, uh, is the fact that um, when you are starting up this whole thing, especially with the past, most of the times you have very bad that you think you can bring from what you have bring down the plastic challenge, but um, the assembly doesn't give uh, the necessary support or, um, because of a lot of bureaucracies. So I see this SMV project as a, quite a good project, but uh, as much as possible, if they can help to also influence um, decision making at the assemblies or speak to them that as, uh, as much as people are coming on board with green related businesses, um, give them the necessary support or whatever communication that uh, they can have with them such that that collaboration because um, I've had challenges where um, I was trying to get a land from them. It was a challenge, so I decided to just speak to somebody and set up somewhere. I was um, giving a notice to vacate that premise. So I see that if uh, initially, as I've requested from that support from the assembly, the assembly could have come in to give that support. There wouldn't have been that need for me to be uh, giving that notice to vacate the premise I was using. So yes, um, uh, we, we all have these ideas, we all have ways that we want to uh, contribute, but the assembly and the local government are Thank you. Hello, Benjamin, where, 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 where uh, which region is this assembly? Is in the West Tino Rice Central region? Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah, I'm in the Takrati currently. Okay, so that's in Western region. So, so that's in Western region. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doc, um, yeah. do you want to quickly take? Thank you, thank two, you. Very and then I would also come in. There are a number of uh, uh, concerns also from the chat box that we would want to uh, deal with. Doc, uh, let me quickly get one or two for you before you can come in. Um, I think, uh, okay, I think you should, you can just uh, take the answers. Okay, what we thank, have you. thank you. Mainly, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, because we, we have read, addressed some of them. Yes, the yes. the market value of plastic is yes. low. I think we have thought about that, and it will take time because mm -hmm. we have the raw material coming in large quantity from the crude uh, 
processing um, companies. And so that over time, plastics, um, plastic waste will still have a low value. But um, if we want to create a, a proper circular economy, then we need to look at the flow of the plastic into the country and then deal with what we have in the country before we, cre we create a more opportunity for some from outside to come in. We need to look at that. Otherwise, it will choke us over a period of time. Now, with Richmond, yes, as I said, the yes, fishing communities are having those challenges. Um, I remember when we visited the Anshuman area, some were burning their plastics over there. But when we also interacted with them, we did a survey. I think the report is still not even ready. Um, we realized they, they told us they, they get some plastic, but they cannot quantify it, but it's not so much. Depend on to what extent they go into the sea. So if you are fishing around mostly the, the, the periphery area or the, within shallow waters, then you are likely to have more of these plastics. But then we need to work with assemblies, as you have rightly suggested, and provide means of storage uh, for them. In fact, even they are net, they are net, they are using themselves as plastics in nature and they can be recovered. I, I remember one of the projects we we're working on was looking at uh, ghost hunt for the, the, the fishing net. And so that is also plastic that can be looked at. Um, in terms of um, working with assembly, that is why we are saying the need to engage these assemblies. They may not have the land to give out. But if we engage the city authorities with, with the traditional authorities, I'm sure we can find a way to have the land to create the enabling environment for the SMEs to operate. Because most of the SMEs we, we encountered, they acquired the land from their own private um, interaction with land owners. And as we said, they were not sold to them, but it was a rented uh, arrangement. And so when they need their land, they go for their land. And that is one of the issues that we need to um, address, but we need to engage assemblies to provide more support because most of them were not seeing the role these SMEs were playing as being important to them. But when we spoke to them, we opened their eyes as to what role they are playing. They realized that there could be more better collaboration going forward. To, to enhance more recovery of the materials from the waste than what they, they, they have been doing now. So it's, it calls for more um, engagement with these sectors. Um, I think when we do that, uh, we will have a way through. Uh, Enoch, I, I think I'm done. Yes, that's, that's, that's good. Um, we will we'll be putting the project email uh, in the chat box uh, so that we, we would you know, continue this conversation uh, beyond 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 uh this this webinar today uh, richmond do you still have your hands up do you want to uh make a submission uh richmond? sorry no it, it it's a okay. old hand but i would uh, i would hello can you hear me go ahead please go ahead just go ahead hello go ahead go ahead Ah, yes. So just to say, yes, thank you, Prof. Yes, thank you. And we are looking forward, uh, Doc, and we are looking forward to, to this document when it's ready, the survey you have in these areas where you, you, you worked. Uh, I, it was an old hand up, but thank you very much that you did some work in that regard. And we'll be happy to see the, the output. And also happy to contribute to areas where we work um, from our beach cleanups. We collect data, so we have um, different data on different materials on specific beaches. It's, um, so yes, we are happy to be in touch. Thanks. Okay, thank Ex you, Ray. Thank you, Excellent. Richmond. Excellent, Richmond. Thank you, Richmond. So, yes, so we, we, we could be in touch. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. Okay. Yes, I, I so said we will be in touch. Uh, I think we've been in touch with them. And so we'll still keep in touch with a plastic punch, yes. Okay, so I think one of the key um, issues coming up has to do with funding. We've had a lot of uh, questions, about three or four questions around funding. Also in the chat box, it's, it keeps on coming up. There are also suggestions around uh, visiting the Plastic Bank Initiative for, for 
for funding opportunity. SMV uh, Green Project uh, 23rd would be hosting another uh, webinar on financing opportunities for green SMEs in Ghana. And so we would entreat that you, you join as well. Uh, the, uh, we've put the, the link on the chat box as well. So already you can, you can start you know, registering on that for the 23rd webinar uh, as well. So we can better discuss some of the financing opportunities for, for green SMEs in Ghana. Things that the Green Project is also offering and other opportunities that are also within the, the ecosystem, both in Western Ashanti and in Ghana as a whole for, for, for us to improve on our financing uh, mechanism as well as SMEs, particularly for startups uh, as well. Um, yes, the presentation will be shared uh, as far as you registered with the, with the web the support that we have also as a project for SMEs, MSMEs uh, within the sector, uh, that is within the wash sector and beyond, you know, to contribute to improving a safe environment for all. We, we have 20 more minutes to go and we'll still want to open up. And, and we'll love to hear also your experience as, as MSMEs. We've seen some coming up in the chat box where you know, startups are struggling with issues of connecting with off takers and, 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 and then also how they will buy back and all that. So it will be interesting also to hear from you, your experience, and that would be very useful for the study uh, as well, you know, in, in making proposals around how to support startups and how to support existing companies also uh, within the, the landscape of, of, of plastic and then e-waste um, as well. So we would love to uh, hear from you also your experience around financing, around also the, the, the policy and enabling environment, uh, and also how, again, we would encourage more women into the subsector uh, as well. We'd love to hear from you also. So that it's all open and yeah. Doc. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll like to, this Doc. Daniel from Mondan, I'd like to add on to the discussion around the fishing. Okay, uh, Daniel. That the fishermen. So what Plastic Punch is doing now is getting data in these areas. So the data is really important for, for policy um, decision making. However, we know that the quantities they are getting from the sea is um, it's not really huge. So if you are bringing in an intervention, when you are bringing in an incentive package, for instance, we know that what they need most is um, premix fuel. So if we can, we are bringing an initiatives like such as um, a letter for letter, meaning that if you, we can give you a letter of premix fuel if we get certain quantities of fishing gear, for instance. Do we have the data to show that we can get this amount of fishing gear and along the value chain, if we are to take it elsewhere to, to sell, we can still get some profit out of it. That will be the incentive to, to make more, to bring more fisher folk on board. So this data will really be important as, as Doug said, so Mondan will be in touch so that we can also take it from there. Thank you. Thank you so much um, as well. And, and you can also share the, the, that also with us uh, so that we can also pick the conversation also uh, from there also. Uh, Paul. Paul, please go ahead, yes. Um, you know, I'm doing um, a private research, like a personal research okay. on um, the, the, the plastic waste in the, in the marine environment. And I'm taking Choco where I'm coming from as the baseline or as the um, case study. Um, if Plastic Punch wouldn't mind, I have I've collected some data which I would like to share with them. You know, we, we all know 90% of the plastic waste in the sea is coming from, from the land. And I did a research and I, I, I realized that fishermen also are putting up to the, the plastic waste in the sea. Uh, formerly, formerly um, when I was growing up in Choco, um, uh, if they are going 
for uh, fishing, right? Um, they have a container that they put water in the container. And when they go out there, they share the water in the container with all the crew members on board during the fishing activities. But right now, I realize um, each canoe, when they are going for fishing expedition, they carry two sachet, two bags of sachet water, two bags of sachet water. And so I ask them, um, this sachet of uh, uh, this, this, this water, when they go out for fishing and they finish drinking the water, where do they keep the, the, the waste? They told me they throw it overboard. Could you imagine we have more than um, um, 700, 800 plus canoes at AMA only? And just do the calculation. Each canoe carries two bags of sachet water. Um, each bag contains about 60, 60, 60 pieces. Um, 30, right? They're 30, 30. So the two is 60. So just imagine several canoes going for fishing, maybe fishing, fishing expedition from Monday, maybe twice a week. And each canoe is offloading 60 pieces of sachet water into the sea times the 700. But that is only for AM only. I don't know about any other beaches. I'm trying to uh, expand my, my, my research to other beaches and other regions to see whether they're also doing the same thing. And if this thing, uh, we don't put a stop to this thing, uh, 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 in the near future, seven years or 10 years to come, uh, they, they, they will be also contributing more than 90% to the waste in the sea. And this one, this, this is not good at all. To so have the data, I'm still doing my research. So if plastic punch wouldn't mind, I would like to share the data with them and, uh, and, and see how best we can, we can, we can, we can uh, um, solve this uh, uh, issue. Excellent, Paul. I think you can exchange uh, emails also. Okay. So you can share your chat, uh, your email in the chat box. Uh, I'm sure uh, they would they would contact you, and any other interested um, individual organization also contact you to to work on this. Uh, Plastic Point has already put uh, their their email up, so kindly go in there and pick, and then connect uh, with them as well. It's quite interesting, and I I I, I started this webinar by by stating that if we do not do anything about plastic waste management in the by the year 2030 we are told that we would have more plastic in the sea than 2050 the fish right that we catch. 2050 so please let, it's 2050 okay yes. so let us get there quickly and we don't have to you know harvest uh, plastic we need fish not plastics so let us take it uh, seriously um yes uh, any other experience uh, that I mean, it'd be interesting to hear from SMEs. They, uh, we've seen some of the issues. We've had, we've, we've seen them in the chat box. We have, have taken note of them, and it'd be interesting to also hear from uh, some of the issues that you are you are confronted with as as micro uh, businesses or SMEs within within the the, the plastic waste, uh, plastic and e waste you know, subsector. It will be interesting to hear from you uh, to also add on to our, our knowledge and then the, the research and, of course, uh, the, the green project as well, so we can strategize well. Um, okay, so hello, my name is Sandy. Go ahead, Please Sandy. Okay, so um, yeah. there is this great resource online, it's called the Precious Plastic. And they have um, machines that, um, if the, the designs are very simple and when you take a critical look at them, you can easily break them down and um, build this machine. You don't really need to, to get the exact things that they got to build this ma machine. So you, you can get some uh, some of the components that I described here. You can get some, um, like, yes, you can hand things to build this machine. So this one will be able to solve the problems in the rural areas so that you don't have to carry the whole plastic. Like, to make, um, the transportation issues carrying the whole thing to uh, Accra to come and where uh, they can just shred the things all in the uh, rural areas before they bring them to the uh, town. That's my contribution. Excellent, Sandy. Of course, the technology is also very important. So it will be interesting to hear some of the technologies that we have that can ease, you know, the load and then also ensure that we have you know less 
cost in terms of transportation uh, to our final destination. Sandy, do you want to still make a point? Oh, no, sorry, thank you. Okay. I, I think Richmond raised your hand quickly and dropped it. I don't know whether you're okay now. Um, enough. Yes. Please, well, um, Dr. Conte has been trying to to communicate, but I think we, we don't hear from her. So, so Doc, can you, Dr. Kote, can you unmute yourself? If if you can unmute yourself so you can uh, speak. Can she just type in so I can read out what she wants to communicate? Okay. If she can type out also in the chat box, then we could also uh, read it out. Okay. Um, so we have roughly 10 minutes to wrap up. And I would want to go back to Doc Rich Mond, Dr. Richard, uh, and, and find out whether you have any probably final words uh, to wrap this up. And then we can uh, begin to, you know. Okay. Th thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, so as, as we've indicated, the sector presents opportunities, but um, we need to do a lot of engagement with the sector players, um, especially the local government um, um, decentralized system, the judicial assemblies and the municipal assemblies. And it may even be that some of the people who may lead from their end, we need to also reorientate their focus on value addition to waste so that they can all be on board to support the initiative to recover as much plastics, as much e-waste as possible from the sector. Now, the EcoSense intervention on building um, power banks and the box, if we can look at it and engage with them also, because my um, our, our issue from the field is that, yes, you will see the fridges and the TVs recovered, but most of them, they only recover the metal component and they have to send the whole block to the dam site again because they may not have use for it. We need to explore ways that we can make use of these. Um, it's unfortunate that we don't have glass blowing centers and all that. Some of them, the screens could have been also be looked at and all that. But if we dis do the dismantling, we are sure um, we can find value for them in future, even if not now. Um, the fishing communities will require also major attention um, in, in awareness creation for, for the plastics, especially so that um, we can be able to bring them on board to support the project implementation in fishing communities like Axim and the Hafasni area. We need to look at that. Um, at Agona, we heard that there was one um, chemical seller who deals with um, such as plastic. We couldn't get in touch with him. And so we, we may have to identify some of these people who might have started at a latent point in the in the district in future to also bring them on board in the intervention. Um, for us, we we open to suggestions and we are also ready to work along to ensure that also women are more uh, integrated into the sector, especially to enhance their role since it borders on sanitation, which begins from our homes. And so we need to um, take the, the role of women um, critically in this um, intervention that we are looking at. Again, the project is looking at circular economy and green economy. So we need to also emphasize on the technology aspect, as you mentioned, so that um, whatever technology we deploy will be better to facilitate the work they do, as well as safeguarding the environment um, for our common good. So I think uh, with this, we want to thank you for the opportunity and the support you've given to us to do this um, assignment. We look forward for more collaboration going forward. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Anfo Otu, for the good work uh, you and your team have actually done. Also put up the green um, project email in the chat box. Kindly make use of it. I see uh, quite a number of, uh, 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 and then also um, quite a number of initiatives that are coming up. I see some in the chat box. Uh, Douglas, 
kindly share and send us an email. Let's 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 pick a conversation, uh, and then others that would want to connect connect with us kindly do that as well. Uh, a quick announcement on the twenty third of this month, we would have uh, another webinar. Uh, the topic is on financing the Ghanaian green and circular economy. Uh, scanning for tailored financial solutions and packages for green SMEs. I would entreat that you join as well. We have put also up the, the, the link for you to already start registering. So kindly, kindly do that uh, as well. Uh, I think we are showing it now on our screen. So kindly uh, take note of, of that and uh, also join uh, this webinar also. Um, on that note, I would want to say a big thank you for your time, for making time to you know, participate in this uh, webinar. We are grateful and your input, we would ensure that we, we incorporate them into the, the research and, uh, and then also share with you. We would share the recordings and the presentation also with you uh, as well after uh, this, uh, maybe after a week, we share that with you as well so that you can catch up again with some of the things that we have discussed and then also the contact that we have also raised here. I'm sure it will be very useful for few. So on behalf of the project manager, I would love to thank you so much for making time to join us. Uh, have a good and let's catch up again on the 23rd of this month for the, the webinar. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you for your participation and time. Thank you.